Hello, friends. In the sequence of ENT lectures, today's uh, lecture is a continuation of the previous class. The topic uh, of the discussion was nasal drug delivery system or how uh, the different forms of nasal drugs are segregated and distributed and absorbed through the nasal cavity. So this particular class will be an extension of the previous class, extension of the previous class. We have already discussed about some anatomical aspect of nasal drug delivery system, how different forms of nasal uh, drugs through the nasal cavity are distributed in the nasal cavity. Let me take a pen first. Okay, let me shift this in the corner. Okay, we have already discussed uh, about mucociliary clearance mechanism, mucociliary clearance mechanism, clearance mechanism, which is the single most important factor in distribution of the nasal cavity drugs. Uh, this particular uh, mucociliary clearance mechanism is has got an important role in, in the nasal health. And we have uh, uh, nominated or we can say we have elaborated two important names in the science of uh, rhinology and they are in the, of the opinion that mucociliary clearance mechanism is the single most important factor for the genesis of acute or chronic rhinosinusitis. So we have already discussed uh, some anatomical part of nasal drug delivery system. So this is uh, the, the skull base. This is supposed to be the anterior skull base. This is the anterior clinoid process. And this will be the optic nerve entry. This will be the cella turkica. Cella turkica ya turkey turkica, which houses uh, nothing but the pituitary gland pituitary gland. This here, uh, the pituitary gland is, this part is called as clivus, clivus. And this is nothing but the foramen magnum through which the CNS is continued as a spinal cord. This is foramen rotundum through which passes the V2 division of the trigeminal nerve. This is supposed to be an endoscopic picture. I know this is a uh, this is not very easy to understand in the first go endoscopy picture by but uh, let me orient you first this is the cut septum this is nasal septum which has been removed and these two are we are looking actually at the roof of the nasal cavity through the end through an uh, endoscope uh, uh, endoscope through the we are looking at the roof of the nasal cavity already a septectomy complete or a removal of the septum has been done these are ethmoid uh, cells, anterior and posterior ethmoidal cells, both are being removed. The anterior sphenoid wall, which is present here, is also removed. This prominence is for the optic nerve. This is prominence is for the carotid artery or internal carotid artery. The, the, um, this recess, which is placed in between the optic nerve and opt, uh, carotid artery is called opticocarotid recess. And this will be the clivus or the, this part. So we are looking actually inside the nasal cavity through an endoscope and looking actually at the roof action. So these are anterior ethmoidal cells. These are anterior ethmoidal cells. This is anterior ethmoidal artery. This is posterior ethmoidal artery, which both are which are a branch of ophthalmic artery. Ophthalmic artery is the first division of, of internal carotid artery. This is uh, the frontal sinus opening and this is lamina papyracea. Lamina papyracea is actually uh, the thin bony partition which separates the orbital cavity from the ethmoidal cells and the bone is also removed. This yellowish uh, uh, thing which is uh, uh, shining over here is nothing but an orbital fat, orbital flat fat which is uh, not prolapsing in the uh, nasal cavity, nasal cavity. So this is all about the absorption of the uh, of, of drug through the nasal cavity. This is frontal sinus, this is frontal sinus, this is sphenoid sinus, this is pituitary fossa, this is clivus. This is clivus, this is pituitary fossa. Pituitary fossa, which houses the pituitary gland. 
and th these are olfactory fibers olfactory fibers and olfactory fibers about 20 of these fibers or uh, olfactory nerves fibers enters into the nasal cavity by by making perforations through the orbital roof what is a orbit uh, uh, not orbital roof ethmoidal roof actually this is the entrance of different olfactory fibers from the olfactory bulb into the nasal cavity through these minute opening 20 on each side so these olfactory neurons through the olfactory bulb enters through the this anterior uh, skull base or ethmoidal roof B both of these side are nothing but the frontal bone and in between this frontal bone is is ethmoidal bone this is crista galli crista galli you can say and this olfactory neurons enters the nasal cavity through the roof of the nasal cavity. And thus we have got two types of absorption of the drugs through the nasal cavity. One is the absorption through the respiratory epithelium, which is majority of the nasal mucosa, about 90% is, is uh, nasal cavity mucosa is nothing but the olfactory uh, is nothing but the respiratory epithelium or pseudo stratified ciliated columnar epithelium. Drugs which are absorbed through this mucosa respiratory epithelium 90% goes through the systemic circulation then crosses or not crosses the blood brain barrier which is uh, modified astrocytes and then it appears into the CSF and then it uh, permeates into the brain tissue or brain matrix. So this is a totally different kind of a circulation or absorption mechanism in which the 90% which is respiratory epithelium, the drug which are absorbed through this respiratory epithelium goes into the systemic circulation, then crosses the blood brain barrier or modified astrocytes, which covers the uh, nasal, uh, the, the, this uh, capillaries of the, of the brain are covered with the uh, astrocytes. And this forms a blood brain barrier, which is very stringent and majority of drugs are not able to pass through this blood brain barrier. And thus appearance of the CSF is hampered by the presence of this uh, BBB or blood brain barrier. The second portal of absorption of the nasal cavity is through the olfactory epithelium. And which uh, this uh, through this olfactory epithelium, the, the drug is directly uh, shedded into or uh, directly gains entry into the CSF and then into the brain. So this uh, absorption pathway through the olfactory epithelium is much more important than the respiratory epithelium because it has to go to systemic circulation in order to make an entry into the brain matrix or brain tissue. So this is the cribriform uh, plate. This is uh, olfactory bulb, olfactory bulb olfactory bulb through the olfactory bulb these olfactory neurons passes or per, per, uh, perforates the scribriform plates and appears into the superior part of the nasal cavity and through which the nasal cavity and uh, drugs are absorbed and directly drained into the brain csf or csf and then into brain first csf and then into to brain so this is a rich area uh, more uh, yellowish in appearance by the presence of a pigment which is called as lipofusin. Lipofusin. Lipofusin is the pigment which is present in the olfactory epithelium, which is more thick, and the drug absorption through this olfactory epithelium is, is more pronounced than the uh, the rest of the epithelium, which is nothing but the respiratory epithelium. So the uh, uh, medications or drugs which are absorbed through the olfactory mucosa are directly drained into the CSF through the venous plexus. Let me explain it to you further. This is olfactory fossa. These are olfactory neurons, ne neurons and uh, these uh, actually you have to understand one important anatomical factors. The, the dura is continued as a periosteum of the ethmoidal bone. So dura, these dura, arachnoid and pia, these three are the meninges or coverings of the brain. So this outer uh, dura matter or the outer wall, which is dura matter is continued as the 
as the uh, periosteum of the bone and this uh, arachnoid matter or arachnoid layer is continued as a as the perineurium layer of the olfactory neurons let me uh, explain it further if this is a olfactory neuron the covering of this uh, bundle will be called as uh, perineurium individual neuron is covered with uh, endo endoneurium and the group of uh, bundle of these uh, neurons are covered with the perineurium and whole of the nerve is covered covered by epineurium so epineurium perineurium and endoneurium inside it so let me draw it again this is epineurium bundle is covered by perineurium and individual nerve fibers are covered with with endoneurium this will be endo this will be perineurium and this will be epineurium so this arachnoid matter or arachnoid layer is continued into the onto into the this uh, perineurium layer so direct entry around, around the nerve also there are venous plexus venous plexus these are venous plexus so drugs which is absorbed through the nasal cavity ascends along this uh, uh, th these perineurium and enters into the subarachnoid space what is subarachnoid space it has got csf so you can see a direct portal is available for the drug absorption when it is absorbed through the olfactory mucosa because it will ascend along with the uh, with the perineurium and enters into the subarachnoid scope because of the anatomical continuation of the arachnoid layer with the perineurium this direct pathway of uh, uh, drug distribution is available in, in in case of olfactory uh, um, region or the when the drug is absorbed through the olfactory region so because of the continuous or contiguous anatomy of the dura and arachnoid with the subarachnoid space sub subarachnoid space which is sub subarachnoid space is nothing but uh, a potential space which is filled with the csf you have to uh, go through the csf circulation as well before uh, going into the absorption segment so these are two lateral ventricle these are two lateral ventricles and they are filled with the lateral wall is filled with choroid plexus choroid plexus and these are these plexus are responsible for the secretion or ultra filtration of the csf or csf uh, is secreted or secreted through this choroid plexus which is nothing but a capillary group of or tuft of capillaries so the blood when it uh, uh, circulating blood comes to this choroid plexus and hence there is ultra filtration or active secretion from these choroid plexus cells into the into the lateral ventricle then it goes into the third ventricle and then it goes into, into the fourth fourth ventricle and through these two opening which is called as foramen of lashki ya lashki and foramen of magenda this is circulated into the into the subarachnoid space and which covers the brain so uh, you have to understand uh, uh, the csf circulation and this uh, csf which is present in the subarachnoid space the drug are absorbed through the olfactory mucosa ascends along the, uh, the the olfactory neurons and enters into the csf so when we talk about uh, this absorption through the respiratory epithelium let me explain this nasal cavity respiratory epithelium this is olfactory fossa i am talking about the rest of area which is 90% and the transport uh, happens to be in two forms the absorption happens to be in two forms between the cells or through the cells these are the cells this is lamina propria when the absorption occurs then between the cells or by opening of the channels and the drug absorption is between the cell this is called as paracellular transport this is a slow transport between the cells and uh, this is specially uh, important for aqueous forms of drugs so as far as uh, absorption through the respiratory mucosa is concerned it is of two type paracellular and transcellular 
when the absorption occurs bit uh, uh, through the cell or when the uh, when the absorption occurs through the cell cell wall then cytoplasm then the other side of the cell wall and then into the other cell this is called a transcellular transport and when the absorption occurs between the two cells which is which has got potential channels for the drug transport this is called as paracellular transport this paracellular transport is a slow in nature and is it is more useful for the aqueous form of drugs whereas this transcellular transport is uh, is more uh, suited for more meant for the lipoidal or lipid forms of drugs and this is a active transport and hence a quick method uh, quick mode of drug absorption so let me sum it up so the paracellular transport is a aqueous transport which is between the cells the it, it, it opens the channels it is a slow transport and meant for aqueous forms of drugs whereas through the cell uh, it is called as a transcellular uh, transport and it is more uh, uh, more applied to or more useful for lipid forms of drugs or lipophilic in age lipophilic in nature and it's a active form of transport and more quickly the drug is absorbed through the nasal cavity so we have gone through two forms of drug absorption one is through the olfactory fossa through the olfactory mucosa in which in the, in that case the nasal cavity drug absorbed is directly drained into the csf and then distributed throughout the uh, brain and the second one is through the respiratory epithelium which goes into the systemic circulation so what are the advantages of using the nasal route as a drug delivery portal uh, first of all it is unlike parenteral route parenteral is parenteral route is is the route uh, which uh, uh, like a intravenous route it is not in invasive in, in nature about 60 percent of the drugs which are using currently are in the form of oral drugs. About 21% are through the intravenous or parenteral route. About 2% of the drugs which are now using are used by the nasal route. Variety of other routes are also available uh, like the rectal uh, administration of drug or transdermal or uh, through the CSF also. So uh, about two, so it's an underused uh, drug delivery system or doesn't the drug delivery route, though the nasal cavity is richly vascular by presence of both the um, internal carotid and external carotid system, it is underused. And second uh, advantage is uh, you don't have to pass through the hepatic uh, uh, metabolism. Uh, so the drug will be distributed into the central nervous system. Uh, far more quickly than the oral administration of the drug. So the, the drug dr need not to pass through the hepatic first metabolism. So the drug distribution uh, is quite uh, quick, especially when the, the size of the particle used in the drug is, is less than um, uh, is less is less than 1000 Daltons. Dalton is the is used for the size of the particle which is used. So when the size of the particle reduces, the absorption increases. Also, the drug absorption is more quick for lipophilic or lipoidal drugs, not for the aqueous drugs, especially in case of a systemic circulation. So quick, uh, it, the drug can be quickly um, uh, administrated through the nasal cavity. The bioavailability can be also used by the huge nasal uh, cavity mucosa which is uh, available and uh, nasal cavity is uh, shows a better bioavailability for the smaller size of the drug when the drug molecule size is uh, smaller then the uh, drug absorption into the nasal cavity is increased so also uh, drug which cannot be absorbed orally can be delivered through that because many of the drug when are exposed to the to the stomach pepsin or enzyme enzymes available in the in the stomach then they, they the the active drug reduces so in order to combat that part also the nasal cavity drug delivery can be used what are the limitations because uh, majority of the aqueous based specialty drugs are having preservatives and these preservatives uh, 
can have some harmful effect on the cilia, the microvilli of the nasal cavity. So the drugs uh, which uh, usually use uh, these uh, uh, preservatives like uh, methyl paraben sulfate or propyl paraben sulfate, also a variety of other uh, preservatives are used, which are specially uh, detrimental to the uh, cilia of the nasal cavity. So apart from that, you can uh, you can use uh, the nasal cavity mucosa, but uh, not so much of the nasal surface area is available. Like uh, in case of a rectal drug delivery system, uh, the nasal cavity mucosa, which is available for drug absorption, is relatively less. So uh, the the amount of the drug which can be introduced through this nasal cavity system is also uh, is, is limited also. So once the nasal drug is, it cannot be removed because, because uh, it is a quick method of drug absorption and suddenly it uh, quickly it goes into the uh, CSF circulation. It also, uh, the drug may cause a nasal irritation also and sometimes it can cause irreversible damage to the cilia of the nasal mucosa. The drug, drug may cause uh, 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 you can say uh, damage to the city of the nasal cavity. So we will discuss uh, in the next class some uh, which the scriptural part of the of the nasse, and uh, we will also go through in which condition you can give a, a nasal uh, uh, drugs through the nasal cavity or nasse you can give, and through uh, which are the condition in which nasse karm is contraindicated. And we will also go through certain clinical conditions uh, which warrants different type of drug administration. You can use uh, aqueous form in which form of uh, nasal disorder and you can use oil form in which, what uh, kind of a nasal cavity and CNS disorder we will discuss in next class. Thank you very much for watching the video. Thank you.